Completely out of the blue, we've had a huge leak for LEGO Star Wars 2024 sets. I'm glad I got my predictions video in when I did, but it turns out I was almost completely wrong only getting literally one set right. The source for most of what we're talking about today comes from Promo Bricks, so we know it's very reliable, and if you're excited, hit that like button. Let's get into it with the first set in set number order 30680, the poly bag. We don't know what it is. It's $5, it has 75 pieces and it will probably be the same as either the biggest set of the January-March wave or the same as what will end up being the UCS set. At this point, we just don't know what the UCS set is going to be. Of course, my guess was Jabba Sail Barge, but it remains to be seen. Next, we have a way more exciting set with set 75372, the Clones versus Droids Battle Pack. And this is revisiting a concept that we saw introduced with the 501st Battle Pack in 2020, where it's kind of a mega battle pack. But this time, LEGO seems to actually be doing it in a better way that seems right and fair for the money that you're going to be paying. You're going to be getting 10 characters. I wouldn't say there are minifigures because six of them are droids, but four clone troopers, which just off the bat is amazing. While I was editing, I came across an Instagram user that claimed to have seen the set already, saying that there are four regular phase two white clone troopers inside, and that would be amazing. This could be the best army builder of all time if that's the case. Of course, if we look at the clone trooper helmets from over the last year, you'll see the degraded look with the helmet warts, but I'm very hopeful that 2024 could change this. As LEGO has already advertised this new phase two clone trooper helmet with no helmet warts at all in a magazine back in May. So if this turns out to be four white phase two clones with no helmet warts, it would be incredible. But of course, a lot hinges on that for me personally. Now on the droid side of things, I believe it has been said to be a three and three split between three regular B1 battle droids and finally returning three super battle droids. I'm hoping the super battle droid is a slightly updated mold design. The design of the super battle droid has been fine since its introduction in 2002 doesn't really need to be changed. But the problem with these was in the clips where the arms and legs would break very easily over time. And so hopefully that is something that they have updated and fixed here, even if the design of the Super Battle Droid aesthetically is generally the same. They really just need to fix the strength for the clips. I almost forgot, this one's 30 bucks with 215 pieces. And Tyler over on Lifebricks is saying that the build in this should be some sort of ARC 170. So like it'll be a pretty bad ARC 170 compared to what we've seen but it sounds better than another bark speeder or another ATRT. I just am also really hoping that we get some sort of staff for the battle droids. That's just something they should have in this set. So this battle pack is very promising and there's a lot to potentially like about it. I'm very hyped for the potential and ready to be disappointed again by holes. Not the movie. Set 75374 is also coming out on January 1st. It's gonna be $140 with 1,325 pieces. And this one is from the Skeleton Crew Disney Plus show that's coming out soon. It's supposed to be the big pirate ship, I guess, that's in the show or in some of the concept art we've seen. I don't think we've had a trailer for this show yet. So we don't really know a whole lot about this other than it's gonna be that ship and would probably include some of the main characters. But much more exciting for me is the downfall of Lego Star Wars helmet sets. I'm kidding. I'm sad to see them go. It seems like Lego Star Wars helmet sets are gone, at least for now. They could, of course, return in a future year, but I've kind of been talking about this over the course of the last year, and it has seemed like helmet sets might not return in future years, or at least the immediate future, and that seems to be the case for 2024, and taking its place is one of my favorite sublines of all time for Lego Star Wars. I have kept this no secret. Pity skill for me was always kind of like that girl you never get over, and to have it back just makes me so happy with LEGO Star Wars. So we should have two MIDI scale sets releasing on March 1st, starting with the 75375 Millennium Falcon MIDI scale set. This one's gonna be $80, so double the price of what we saw back in 2009, which is crazy. Of course, inflation kind of plays into that, but still, a MIDI scale Millennium Falcon is gonna be a cool remake to see. It'll allow me to do a cool comparison video, and I think this one will be a lot more popular than the one that we had in 2009. Notoriously, MIDI scale was Pretty rough selling, but seeing it make a comeback again just makes me overly happy. Next, we have the 75376 Hantive 4 MIDI scale set. This is the prediction that I got absolutely unequivocally correct. This one's gonna be $70, and I'm also very excited for it. This one should look really cool next to the Super Star Destroyer and the Falcon. I think overall, this MIDI scale line is coming together well, and I'm excited for the future of it, because this means in a couple more years, we'll be able to get some prequel MIDI scale sets. Next is set 75378. It's supposed to be releasing on May 
first, and it's Grogu's escape from The Mandalorian Season 3. The only two characters I can guarantee will get in this set is Keller and Beck and Grogu. We can obviously assume it will include the Bark Speeder and the Pram. This is a $30 set, so this is not going to include the gunship and all the fun stuff that could have been with a giant playset like that. But on a small scale, this should also be very fun. It could theoretically include part of the Jedi Temple or the landing pad that they arrive at and include clone troopers, which is obviously something that would be really cool. It could also just include some of the Naboo guards there, I guess. There's definitely a lot of potential here. I would love to see some non-helmet hole 501st or non-helmet hole Coruscant guards that we see in the scene. Like just a lot of potential for a really cool character lineup in a set like this. I would expect more than the two characters that we would assume is there. Next, what we have is what I think is the worst set choice for early 2024 so far. That's the 75379 R2-D2. It's supposed to release March 1st for $100, and as it stands, it just seems like a smaller version of what we have in the UCS R2-D2. Now, LEGO makes smaller versions of UCS sets all the time, but like doing a character like that in a smaller version just doesn't feel right to me. Now, if the set ends up being better in some way, has some cool features, I don't know what this could be motorized, like they did the Lego Boost R2-D2 set a few years ago. Unless it has a cool gimmick or there's something here that we just don't know with the rumor, this seems like a pretty lame set to me to have. Like we could have just had another cool play set or display set, but R2-D2, just as bland as it gets. The next two sets for May 1st aren't quite as bland though, coming from episode one, The Phantom Menace. Yes, next year is the 25th anniversary of The Phantom Menace and it seems like Lego will be partaking by making at least a couple of sets. First off, we have the Bunta Eve Podrace Diorama, set 75380. This one's gonna be $70. I assume it would have some version of Anakin's pod racer built into it, but dioramas notoriously feel small for the money, and so I can't possibly expect, maybe it's a micro scale diorama the more I think about it. I was thinking more minifig scale, but you know, maybe it is gonna be a micro scale diorama, kind of like the Death Star Trench Run, and then in that way we'll end up with like five or six different micro pod racers in the, the pod racing setup. Maybe it'll be like the start finish line and they'll have the crowd built with like micro stud figures. I don't know. It is also our first prequel diorama. That was lost on me for a minute there. That is exciting and completely unexpected. I totally thought episode three next year would be our first prequel diorama dioramas, but it goes to the pod race. Now the next set, 75381, unless there are no helmet holes on the clone set, I will think is the coolest set of 2024, at least that we know of right now. It's a buildable droidica. How fun is that? At just $60 too, it should be reasonably close to what we see here on screen. I think this one's by B3 Customs, but man, this just sounds like an all-timer for the droid side of things as far as LEGO Star Wars goes. I mean, we have the 2007 MTT, and then you get the buildable droidica. Now, I don't think this one will have the cool functionality of the 2002, I think, Droidica set 8002. That one you could actually roll out and it would pop out with its like guns ready. Absolutely one of the coolest features all time in a Lego Star Wars set, but that was Technic. This should just be a buildable character like we've seen tons of buildable characters in the last five years. So continuing to add onto that line with a prequel character of all things is very cool. Or I guess a droidic is not a character, a thing, I don't know. Now set 75382 at $240 is said to be the UCS set, but as of now, we just don't know what it is. We'll either have to wait for the poly bag to see if the poly bag seems like it could be what the UCS set is gonna be, or for it to just leak, but we just don't know right now. Set 75384 is supposed to be from the Young Jedi Adventure Show, which is probably not all that exciting to many people, but it's supposed to be the Crimson Firehawk with 136 pieces for $50. That one's also a January 1st release. It is a junior four plus set so that's why the price per piece is so wonky there now it should have the two characters that we see in the hasbro set piloting the ship and then i would expect nubs to at least make an appearance here he was not in the other young jedi adventure set so getting nubs here would just make all the sense in the world now the next set is also one of the more exciting sets but it's also one of the more potentially disappointing sets depending on what you had in mind for what something like this would look like it's the 75387 tantive 4 boarding diorama this one's supposed to release on march 1st for just $55, so a pretty good price. However, when envisioning this set coming out for LEGO Star Wars, it was an obvious thing that they would make after what they did with the Dark Trooper set. I think a lot more people thought it would be more in line with the Dark Trooper set, both in price and style. Doing it as a diorama set is a really nice display thing for collectors, but the Dark Trooper was also a really good display thing for collectors, and it didn't have to be an overly expensive diorama. Adding in that black base just adds more cost that 
isn't really necessary for something like this when especially it's been proven with the Dark Trooper set, you can do the concept at a cheaper price at like 30 bucks instead of $55. So the price here just almost being doubled compared to what it could have been is a little bit disappointing, but hey, maybe the build is just that good. We will see. Now, as far as the minifigs in this set, it is said to include Darth Vader, Rebel Troopers, and Stormtroopers. I would expect one and a split between the other four being two of each. I guess that's assuming there's five minifigs in this set. So that would be a cool split in characters there. It should be a really cool diorama. I just wish they had done it more in line with what they did with the Dark Trooper set, so it'd be cheaper for all of us. It will still look probably very cool. It's just one of those things that people are gonna sit there and look at and be like, well, that costs too much money. And you're like, well, you're probably right. They could have done this cheaper. And while this is absolutely not a battle pack, it should bring down the price of Rebel Fleet Troopers if you want to get more for your Yavin set, or maybe the Rebel Fleet Trooper will end up also coming in one of those paper bags from Europe. They should be able to bring the price down on those Rebel Troopers just a bit as well. So I would hold out on getting more of those if you're looking into doing so. If you're hyped for 2024, hit the like button. Let me know what clone troopers you expect to see in the comments section below and subscribe if you're new to the channel so you don't miss all my my reviews on 2024 sets when I get them in hand closer to 2024. <laughs>